sky in Australia. Lord, you must open up the sky in Antarctica. Lord, open up the sky. Open up the sky. For even God spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? I bring you good news today. God has made promises he will never break. And because we are bona fide heirs of these precious promises, our inheritance comes by default. Nothing is impossible to us. We rise in his name. We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Listen. lies before me on my own I don't think I can press on to face the fear that finds me here in my darkest night but I can I can Oh 
wondrous things you've done And all this greater things to come And we stand
I know you have been waiting. I know you have been waiting. The eagle is here. We have in the house Minister Don't see Oyekon. I want to tell you that our father the GS has adopted him as a child. He is now part of the family. And today it is a rare privilege. I am honored to bring to the stage Minister Dunsin Onyeka. I believe that belongs to Jesus. Would you lift your hands and celebrate Jesus? For no man can do these things except God be with him. Would you lift your hands wherever you are and just say thank you Jesus. Somebody return all the glory to Jesus. So we give you all the glory. So we give you all the honor. So we give you all the adoration. One more time, somebody say hallelujah. Uh, before we start tonight, before we go on a journey with the Lord, I just want to first thank um, our daddy. Daddy, from the U.S., come with you. And mommy in absentia, you know, it, it looked like I'm, uh, it looked like I'm, I, I and daddy have probably met before, before the, because of the way you just opened your heart to me and just blessed me from your heart. And thank you for adopting me, daddy. Thank you. And I want to celebrate all the leadership. Minister, don't say we have mommy here. Oh, mommy, God bless you, man. Please, can we celebrate mommy? Thank you, mommy. God bless you. The Bible says in Hebrews 12 that we have not come to a mount that can be touched. We have come to Zion, the city of the living God. We have come to the company of innumerable angels. We have come to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. If you are wondering where you are, this is Zion, where the spirit of just men are made perfect. We 
have come to the church of the firstborn. We have come to the heavenly Jerusalem. We have come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. Would you lift your hands to Jesus and bless him? Because worship is more than a song. It's an expression of the heart. Would you lift your hands and express your heart to God? Paul said that the lifting of our hands may be like the evening sacrifice. Lift your hands and bless him. Bless him from your heart. Tell him, Lord, I love you. Say, Lord, I love you. Say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I give you all the glory. There is none like you. There is none like you. For a broken heart and a contrite spirit, thou will not reject. I have more than a song today. I brought myself. I am the sacrifice. I have more than a song. Lift it up, say. I, I brought mine. I am your worship. Say, I have more than a song. I have more than a song. Today. Today. I brought myself. I am I am the sacrifice. Lift your hands and say, I have more than a song. Today, I brought myself. I brought myself. I am your worship. I am your worship. I have more than a song. Today, today. I brought myself. I am the sacrifice. I am the sacrifice. Would you drop your phones and worship? I have more than a song. Today, today. I brought myself. I brought myself. I am your worship. I am your worship. Because we see, we see this living sacrifice. I am. Musicians prophesy. Would you lift your hands and tell him, Lord, receive the sleeve and sacrifice. I am Jesus, accept the sleeve. I am. One more time, say, receive, receive, just leave it, leave it, sacrifice, I am your worship, say, Lord, accept, accept, just leave it, just leave it, sacrifice, I am your worship, your worship, so at the altar with my father. Aya. Hey, leave me at the altar with my father. Somebody say, leave me at the altar. Leave me at the altar with my father. Leave me at the altar with my father. Say, leave me at the altar with my father. 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 Because
because those that wait upon the Lord they shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles leave me at the altar with my father there's no need chasing shadows leave me at the altar with my father Elijah what are you waiting for he said I'm waiting for the hand of the Lord because the secret to speed is waiting leave me at the altar you will show me the path of life ah in your presence there is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore leave me at the altar with my father it is surely goodness mercy shall follow me all the days of my life because i dwell leave me at the altar with my Receive. I accept. Some of you, what you need tonight is just an encounter. Because this is the gate of heaven where angels ascend and descend. And Jacob was turned to Israel overnight by an encounter. Accept. Since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that easily besets us. Receive. I so leave me at the altar with my father. Leave me at the altar with my father. The psalmist says, A day in your court is more than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to stand with sinners and scoffers. Leave me at the altar with my father. Because all I need tonight is just a torch. Then that way I can change my world. Leave me at the altar. Real impact is at the altar. Leave me at the altar with my father. Ala palo. Leave me at the altar. God, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure and whole. Try it and true. Oh, we thanksgive. I'll be early. God. One more time, lift your voice, Lord, free. Try. With us, I'll be a leader. Sanctuary. The spirit of the Lord just told me is dealing with weight, because not all weight are sins, but all, all not all sins are weight, but all weight are sins. Is dealing with weight. Backbiting is a weight. Gossiping is a weight. Lying is a weight. If you will surrender yourself to him tonight, 
it will shock you how the Lord wants to use you. I'll be early. Stealing is a weight. Wrong company is a weight. I'll be here worshiping all of the days of my life. I'll be here Lift your hands and tell him. Say, I'll be here. Bow me down. All of the days. Say, I'll be here. Bow me down. All of the days. Say, I'll be lifting hands. Even when it isn't easy. Even when it isn't easy. I'll be here, right at your altar. Even when it isn't easy. Oh, come, let us exalt him. the presence say for ye for ye alone is worthy for ye alone is worthy Generations after generations keep praising you, yet no what sums you up. Then I ask the Lord, What name fits you? And he said, Lift your voice, say generations, generations after generations. Keep praising you. Yet no word. Yet no word serves you well. Then I ask the Lord. Then I ask the Lord. Hey, what they teach you? And He said, Yahweh. And He said, Lift your voice, everybody, and declare the name. Say, Yah, yeah, the Hallowed One. Yah, the Hallowed One. Yah, the Holy One. Yah, the Holy One. Yahweh. Yahweh, the King of Zion. Extol Him who writes on the cloud by His name, Yah. Yah, yeah, the Hallowed One. Yah, the Holy One. Yah, the Holy One. You are Yahweh. Yahweh. Zion. One more time, say, Yeah, the Lord one. Yeah, the Holy one. Yeah, the Holy one. Yeah, the Holy one. Yahweh. Yahweh, the King of Zion. Somebody say, Yeah, the Lord one. Right 
raise your hands and wave it to Yahweh tonight. Yahweh is here. The Lord of hosts is here. The mighty one of Israel is here. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. We worship you, Yahweh. For where the Lord is spirit, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. How the demon day to where all day so, for this day we're, we're, we're made from things unseen. There are ramps of glory for your world to see. Dimensions found only. Jesus Christ the Son. Somebody put your hands on your belly. Channels of my spirit. Open up. I am with the Father. Open up. Say no boundaries, no limit. Open up. Let him call unto thee. Somebody place your hands on your belly. Channels of my spirit. Open up. I am with the Father. Open up. No boundaries, no limit. Open up. Let him call unto thee. Somebody just pray out, pray out. Let the channels of your spirit open up. Jesus, on the last day of the feast, John 7 37, he stood and cried out, If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink, for out of his belly shall flow. Yeah? There's a river whose stream shall make glad the city of the Lord. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. For with you are the fountains of life. And in your light we see light. For you will give us to drink. Out of the rivers of your good pleasures. Some of the drink of that river. His name is Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of the Father. Is the Holy Ghost the Spirit of the Father? Mary said, How shall this thing be? Seeing that I know no man, how shall this thing be? Seeing that I have no connection, the angel said, Is the Holy Ghost that's how you make impact? The Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow you. Channels of my spirit. I am with the Father. It's the Holy Ghost. No boundaries, no limit. Let him call on to thee. Open Somebody pray out loud. Pray out loud. It's a promise that in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon the flesh. Your sons and daughters, they shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. It's, it's high time that the veil be removed. I said the veil be removed. That the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. That you may know, that you may know, it's high time that your eyes are open, that your eyes are open, that you will realize that those who are with you are more than those who are against you. Hey, somebody pray. This is a praying church. This is a praying church. Hey, yeah. Okuku Parada Imalada Imalada
Simon le Dao. Simon le Dao. Hey. Lift your voice and declare, sir. Simon le Dao. I don't know what the, why the Lord is telling me about 2 Corinthians 10 5. For the weapons of our warfare, for they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. The first thing He does is to pull down strongholds. Strongholds are things that hold you strong, strongholds are mindset, strongholds are mindset, pulling down strongholds, and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of the Christ Jesus let your eyes be open that the eyes of your understanding your understanding might be enlightened that you may know that you may see the riches in Christ Jesus that same power is at work in you right now that same power is healing all over this place that same power is changing levels and I hear like John the beloved in Revelations 4 come up either the Lord is calling someone up tonight come up either come up either come up either there's a clarion call in the realm of the spirit and it's bringing souls into glory is bringing sons to glory. Father to joy, spirit to spirit, I am lighted by your word. With your breath of life, that's how I come alive. That's how I change my world. Just breathe your name upon me. Just breathe your name upon me. Your day will raise your name. Listen, because I wanted to sing it differently. Recently, I was journeying with the Lord in the spirit. And the Lord said to me, when we made Adam, we did not make a baby. We made a full man. For two reasons. In our own likeness and image. And then number two, where we made Adam, there is nothing like time. Because it takes time to grow. Meaning that, whatever you lost in time you can regret it out of time i said whatever you lost in time it can be restored in the presence now you are standing face to face with the lord jesus tonight and i sense that the lord is restoring lost years lost time lift your hands everybody Declare, say, just breathe your name upon me. Say, just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Your day will hear. Your day will hear. It's your name. Breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me. Just like in the beginning, Breathe. where I was before you formed me, Breathe. in the place of Koinonia, 
name. Your day will hate. Your day will hate. It's your name. Breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Some of you, the gifts you lost are coming back. When you breathe your breath upon me. Breathe. Everything dead must come back to life. Breathe. And that's how I go from glory to glory. Breathe. Your day will hate. Your day will hate is your name. Breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. For there's a spirit in man. And only the breath of the Almighty Breathe. gives him understanding. Breathe. Your day will hear. Your day will hear. It's your name. Breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me. Spirit of the living God, come like the wind. Come like fire. Come like glory. And let everyone under this atmosphere be enveloped. There's so much presence here. not so therefore what the axe is led to the root tonight whatever tree the Lord has not planted in your life I stand under the protocol of the grace in this house whatever the Lord has not planted in your life bad trait bad habit sicknesses abnormalities in your body I stand under the protocol of the anointing in this house. Let every tree that the Lord has not planted, let them be uprooted now. First, he 
it was fragrance then it turned to fire my worship is this is how you win your battles one more time said so first it was fragrance then it turned to fire my worship is my weapon this is how I win my Somebody shout impact. impact! Somebody who has been impacted shout impact. impact! Tonight is your night. You will not miss any part of tonight in Jesus' name. Now remember that you have VIPs. And tonight God has already started something. I want to introduce to you our father, the father that Dunsi has adopted as his own father. And you can see the anointing that has been dropped already. Now the anointing is coming upon you right now. Are you ready? Let me give you something to welcome our father. Now, impact is how many letters? Ah, no, you are not ready. Impact is how many letters? So you are going to call each letter and I will tell you about the man of God. What is the first letter? Ah. Our father is an international evangelist. Ah. Talk of the United Arab Emirates, the United States of America, Russia, Ukraine. He takes the world with miracles following. What is the next letter? Ah. Oh, with simple short prayers. Pastor Kumi commands the devil in the name of Jesus. And at the mention of the final, what will happen today? Mountain will move. What is the next letter? Oh, our father is a pay setter scholar. In 1967, he was the best graduating student with a first class in mathematics at University of Ibadan. What is the next letter? Our father is the author of several best-selling books. Books like Holiness Made Easy, Marriage the Christian Option, How to Increase Your Faith, The Lord is My Shepherd. What is the next letter? Please. Our father is a cheerful father. He's always with a warm and beautiful smile. No wonder at 80 years, the smile is becoming more beautiful, more warming, sweeter as the days go by. What is the next letter? Me. Our father is a trendsetter. His own trends are not for Twitter or TikTok. He trends for Christ. He trends for success. He trends for holiness. He trends for integrity. It is a real, rare privilege for me to welcome the man I call my father. Who is your father? To the pulpit. Welcome Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuli. Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuli. God bless you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. You know, the young will grow. And the son, the daughter, will grow beyond the father in Jesus' name. All those things you have heard will be multiplied in your life. Reproduced in your life. Now tonight, look at this. We started with I. Second day, M. The third day, P. And the fourth day, A. And then tonight, we're coming to C. Everybody shout C. I said shout C. You know, there is one word that's very important as we move on as we move up as we achieve and as we try to arrive is the word cope you see a lot of things happen that people don't know how to cope when they don't cope they cop out to cop out means just give up die don't move again 
that thing has happened, you cannot cope your cup out. And tonight, I will show you how to cope in every situation. You're going this way and going that way, and it appears that all your neighbors, all your classmates, all your mates, other people, they cop out, they cop out, they cop out. I cannot find them again. I'm going to keep you standing. Amen. Standing firm. Amen. You will cope. Amen. I will cope. Whatever happens, I will go. Wherever I am, I will go. As I am climbing up, as I am climbing up, and something crosses my way, I will go. Are you there? Where are you? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, you have touched our lives already. The Holy Ghost are taking over. And we're face to face with the Almighty. I pray, Lord, anything that needs to be done, everything that needs to be done, do it in every life that everyone will cope in every situation in Jesus' name. Amen. Let your power come upon everyone. Amen. And I pray everything you have ordained, everything you have planned, everything you have promised, everything you have prophesied, that each one will be, will be there. Yeah. Will get there. Yeah. Will do it. Yeah. And great will be your manifestation yeah. and your presence in every life in Jesus' name. Yeah. I thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. That's an amen in your life. Yeah. Angels say amen on your behalf. Yeah. And the promises of God will be yes and amen in every life in Christ in Jesus' name. Yeah. God bless you. You can sit down. We're coming to a story, starting with a story of the people that God raised up and he wanted the least of them boys girls men women to have an impact impact in the home impact in the community impact in their nation impact in all the nations of the world that nation is israel already the arch and i already the arch and m already they had a p already they had an a and now it came to see. I'm talking about the children of Israel. I, God, interrupted them with a miracle of deliverance. I, they were interrupted in many years of slavery. They have been slaves for centuries. And all of a sudden, God interrupted the life of Moses. And then he gave him the power, he gave him the mission to go to the children of Israel and interrupt them with the message of deliverance. And to go to Egypt and interrupt Pharaoh in all that Pharaoh was doing. I am, he moved them out. Out of mediocrity, he moved them. He was moving them to the land of promise where they will have mastery of everything, everyone, every situation. And then, P, he gave a purpose driven life. Purpose. And he said, You'll bring them out. Why? They will worship in this mountain. And after that, I've prepared a lunch for them. And the purpose is take them out of the place of slavery, uh, slavery and take them to the place where the lunch will bring forth plentifully. And then we have a, the action and the attitude. Moses, first of all, said, how can I do that? 
uh, Mr. Amaral, I've never been a good speaker, and there's nothing I can do. And then the Lord said, what's that in your hand? He said, it's a rod. Throw it down. It became a serpent. Pick it up, and it became whole again. He said, with that, you will go to Pharaoh, and you will do, you will act out everything. I tell you to act out. His attitude changed. He appreciated the Lord. Thank you, Lord. He appreciated the Lord. You and I together, we can make it. He appreciated the Lord. And he knew that he was going to get there. And then he got to Egypt. And then the first action. You know, if you're going to make it in life, and thank God you'll make it in life. Action. Throw the rod down. That's action. Pick it up again. That's action. Eventually they came out. They were at the Red Sea. And they prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. You understand? Prayer without action will not get any result. You understand? Uh, you know, coaching the promises and fasting without action will not uh, make anything to move. And the Lord said, what's that in your hand? Why are you crying unto me? You have prayed enough. Act now. Act now. Take that road, stretch it to the river. It is action. And then the river parted. They go to the other side. How did they get to the other side? The way had parted, and the river had parted, and the children of Israel were still standing there. Tell them, you told them to stand still. There is no action in standing still. They're going to get to the place they ought to get to by taking action tell them to move forward and they move forward they took action they go to the other side and then god said take another action close that river he stretched the road and everything closer and you know everywhere they went and as they moved on to the promised land action there was rock there was no water what are we going to drink action take that rod and smite that rock action and water came out now we come to see and the determining factor in the lives of the children of israel after i after m after p after a is the sea Will they cope? They sent spies to the land of promise. Go and look for the fruit. Look at how the way is and what is there. And they came back. Only two people could cope, Joshua and Caleb. And the rest ten copped out. And because of the copping out, that's why all the I am he became wasted and he couldn't go beyond the land, beyond the wilderness. Only the people that cope. And that's why I rejoice with you. You will cope. Yeah. I will cope. Look at Numbers chapter 13, verse 28. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land and the cities are walled. A very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Understand? It is not what you see that stops you. It's what you think that you see stops you. It's not what you see. It's your imagination. It's your thinking. It's who you think. I cannot. That's your confession. You have what you say. We cannot, that's your confession, you have what you say. They said, moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Look at Bastachi. It says in Bastachi, and Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. Action, action. Let us go up at once. All the miracles will mean nothing if we don't go up. Let us go up at once. All the prophecies on your life, all the promises the Lord has made will amount to nothing if you don't take action. Let us go up at once. The presence of Moses, the power in the rod, and the power in the name will mean nothing if you don't take action. Let us go up at once. At once. There are times when 
This is the time to take action. This is the time to rise up. This is the time to move on. If you miss that time, you might wait another year. Who knows another decade? Who knows another 40 years for the children of Israel? Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. We can go. I said we can go. Yeah. And then look at verse 31. Those who cop out, those who just gave up, but the men that went up with him said, We'll be not able. How do you know? We'll be not able. You see somebody running, and because you've not trained yourself, and because you've not put yourself in the mode of the people that run. You've not thought of your legs, and they thought of their legs, and they use their legs, and they train themselves. We'll be not able. How do you know? You see somebody solving a great problem, mathematical problem, and you say, I cannot. How do you know? You see somebody performing an operation, and they say that operation, it had never been performed before, and you're still a medical student. You say, I cannot. How do you know? You read a very good book, and that good book is selling and it's having uh, millions of copies selling and it says the best seller by the people that look at books that are written you say i cannot write a book how do you know and then you see somebody who has the same goal you have and he has achieved in such a time you say i cannot how do you know these people said we be not able their language limited them. Their thoughts limited them. Their mindset limited them. The impossibility in their brain, imagination. What they thought that limited them will be not able to go up against the people. For they are stronger than we. How did they know? Did they conduct any medical report for those people? Look. There are some trees that appear big and strong, but they are hollow on the inside. And they are not as strong as that other tree. You look at a person, and this, uh, you know, sometimes a man is a bully, or a fellow is a bully, is actually empty inside. It's a timid on the, it's timid on the inside, but they can shout. And then you say that to put up everyone, and you think they are stronger than you are. God has given you all the strength you need to live the life he called you to live. I can do what he says I can do. I said I can do what he says I can do. I don't compare myself to the other person, to that other person. He called me for this. He called him for that. He called him for that. And then as I look at myself, if Moses was able to do what he called him to do, I can do what God has called me to do. I. I. I can do what he has called me to do. I imagine Peter looking at Jesus Christ and then with a word he heals the sick. And I imagine Peter saying, that's Christ. I cannot do that. I imagine Peter following Christ to the place where uh, that daughter of Jairus had died. And then with one word, Jesus raised up Jairus. I imagine Peter saying, uh, Christ is marvelous. I cannot do that. Peter, how do you know? And then I see Peter in chapter 5 of Acts. And then as he was walking, a shadow was healing the sick. Don't say you cannot. When your time comes, you will. Yeah. I see Peter in the house where the late dockers. And like Jesus raised the dead, he said, you know, he spoke to her and she came back to life. Don't say you cannot. Maybe yesterday you could not. Maybe this moment you cannot. But tomorrow, when your time comes, you will. Yeah. I can. I, can. I, will. I will. I must. I must. 
They search, they could not, and then in verse 32, in verse 32 it says, and they brought up an evil report of the land. What's an evil report? Somebody says when you tell a lie about another person, about a project, about something uh, that should be done, you discourage people, that's bad, that's evil report. Uh, well, that's, that's right. But when God expects that with everything he has put in you, that you can, and you can rise up, and you can achieve, and you can do this, and you say you cannot, you cannot do what God says you can do, what God has prepared you for that you can do, what God pre uh, prepared Moses for to go and tell you, this is what you do, and then you say you cannot, that's an evil report. When you tell lies on yourself, when you depreciate yourself, when you belittle yourself, when you cop out and you say, that's not meant for me, that's the evil report there of the land, which they search unto the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have gone uh, to such an uh, age is the land that eateth up the inhabitants of the land. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. Men of great stature. I can say a lot about that, but I don't have time. You know, we always think the other person is great, but I'm little. We always think uh, the other person we see there he is the one, he is the big man, he is the great man, he is the uh, accomplisher, but I cannot. We always lift up other people above who they are, and then we put down ourselves beyond measure. Come up. That's not uh, humility. That one is just an evil report about what God has said about you. Look at verse 33. In verse 33, and there we saw the giants, the sons of Enoch, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. That's exaggeration. There are people that exaggerate and they want to cop out. They want to excuse themselves. They don't want to do something and they want to remain mediocre. They want to remain idlers and they say, after all, in our own sight, we are grasshoppers. I am not a grasshopper. I'm a creature of God. I'm a follower of Christ. I'm a conqueror. I'm a victor. I see that some people don't know how to say. They don't like to say that about themselves. They say, Pastor, leave me where I am. I'm a grasshopper. Well, thank God, I'm not a grasshopper. Any grasshopper in the house today? Any giant in the house today? The Lord will make more than a giant, more than a conqueror in you in Jesus' name. He said, so we were in their side. Now, tell me, did you interview those people? Tell me about what you see about me. No, they didn't. They just assumed. It's imagination. Imaginations kill a lot of people. And they said, we are grasshoppers in our own sight. They are giants in our own sight. Even in their sight, we ourselves, we look like grasshoppers. I want to talk to you tonight. When I say I'm talking to you, I pick you up as an individual. I'm not talking to a crowd. I'm talking to you. And this word will have impact in your soul, in your spirit, in Jesus' name. The topic tonight for C, coping, not coping out for credible contribution. The reason why the Lord has made you is that you contribute creditably to the world in which you live. And if you're going to do that, you must cope. You must cope. You must cope with everything that comes along, coping, not coping out for credible contribution. Number one, uh, we're dividing the message three parts. Number one, the courage to cope 
at the crossroads. The children of Israel were at the crossroads. The courage to go at the crossroads. Number two, the consequence of copping out, dropping out with cowards. Cowards drop out. And the people that, you know, they don't know how to stay there, stay still, stand still, let the wind pass, let the storm pass, let the way clear, and then you can move on because of the temporary things they see, they cop out, they check out, and they crawl out. The consequence of copping out with cowards. Number three, our connection. Of the conqueror for a new creation. Our connection. Our connection. All we need to do is plug that thing into the socket and your light will brighten out. Yeah. I said your light will brighten out. Yeah. You know what I discover? Connection. Let's say, for example, there's darkness. And then you pick up that thing and you put it in the socket. Doesn't matter you're six years of age. Doesn't matter you're 60. Doesn't matter you're 80. Doesn't matter you're 90. It's the connection. It's not your age. It's not your DNA. It's not your IQ. It's not your EQ, emotional quotient. It's not, uh, you know, your background. It's not your parents. It's not the genes. And it is not your country or whatever it is the connection and once we make the connection tonight you'll be a new creature Amen. all things will be possible in your life i said all things will be possible in your life Amen. number one the courage to cope at the crossroads the courage to cope at the crossroads we're looking at joshua chapter one verse five Take this, Joshua is gone. You are the man of the hour. You are the woman of the hour. You are the boy, the girl of the hour. What he told Joshua, the Lord is telling you, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. Yeah. You know, people don't understand that. God was telling Joshua, I've given you an assignment. Is the continuation of the assignment of Moses. Now you are the man of the hour. Look at all these, all these millions of Israelites. You are the one that will lead them into the promised land. And the moment you stand, you stay in that assignment I give you, no man of Canaan shall be able to stand before you. God didn't mean if you go back to Egypt, you don't have any business there. You don't have any ministry there. You don't have any assignment there. If you go back to the place you don't have assignment, Pharaoh will stand and crush you. But as long as you stay in the calling I'm giving you, as long as you stay in the forward movement, of going to capture the promised land, there shall be no man able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Now understand, this is the Almighty God talking. As I was with Moses, every time, even when Moses faced what he thought he could not face, as I was with him, so I will be with you. I will not fail you. What if I get to a situation, I need resources, and the resources are not there? Uh-uh, it will never happen. I will not fail you, nor forsake you. When those feelings things are before you, I will not forsake you. When the powers that be, when they gather all their efforts and they get after you, I will not forsake you. Look at verse 6. It says in verse 6, Be strong and of a good courage. Be strong and of a good courage. I have talent to act in drama, but I don't have courage. You'll never be a dramatist. I have brain to be a scholar, 
but I don't have courage to pursue. You'll never be a scholar. I have what it takes to be a professional, but I look all around. I don't have the courage to join the team and then do what I need to do without courage. Whatever brain power you have, whatever background you have, and whatever inspiration you have, and whatever books you have read, and whatever training you go through, and whatever encouragement you have, and how many days of praying and fasting you go through without courage, everything will make you remain at the zero level. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto these people thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. God said, I'm the one on the line. My name is on the line. My integrity is on the line. I already swore unto your fathers to give you the land. Therefore, I'm the one that made the promise. I'm the one that will see you through. There is nothing to be afraid of. He will do it in Jesus' name. Look at the beginning of that verse 6. Be stronger and of a good courage. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, it says, Only be thou strong and very courageous. You see that? It's saying, with all the gettings you get, with all the gains you have made, and with all the good, good things you possess, courage is very important. You have to be courageous that God is calling me to a higher level. I see somebody there, the Lord is calling you to a higher level. No panic, no fear, no negative imagination, no negative confession, no going back to my background, and no going back to do I have resources or not. Be only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not to the right not to the left. It says that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Where's the prospered man there? The prospered woman there. You will prosper. Amen. I said you will prosper. Amen. Who said that? God said that. That you will prosper. I wake up in the morning and I'm filled with joy. And when it appears I don't have the physical resources, natural resources, I'm confessing I will prosper. I'm going for an interview and then I remember the word of God and I tell myself I will prosper. I stand or sit before those interviewers and as I look at them, some of them smile, some of them frown, some of them, you know, they act as if, who do you think you are? To get a great job like this, and I whisper to myself, I will prosper. I finish that interview, and I say goodbye like somebody is a successful person. Not like, I'm at your mercy, will I get it, will I not get it? I smile because there's something that tells me on the inside that I will prosper. I see the mail coming in. I've not even opened the mail, and then I say, thank the Lord, the mail has come, and I will prosper they tell me to resume and to go and do this medical test and all that before i come in i go to do the medical test i'm not thinking will they discover something that will disqualify me how can i be disqualified when god has qualified me and i say i will prosper and go through life go through life and always understand this is the day the lord has made and uh, the lord will make you prosper in jesus name now that means that when you have courage you're able to cope able to cope in what areas do we cope because we're looking at courage to cope at crossroads. Those children of Israel, they came to the crossroads. And in their crossroad, a lot of them were not able to cope. They started crying. They started saying, we'll choose a captain that will lead us back to captivity. They couldn't cope at their crossroads. I will cope. 
I will call. The Lord has put something in every heart to do and to have ability to what God has called you for. In what areas do you cope? Number one, we cope under peculiar predicaments. Peculiar predicament. You have heard of those. Uh, at least you have, you know, one person born without the limbs, without hands, and without uh, feet, and yet he made it, became a professional, is now married, and is having children. If he can cope, you have two hands, you have two feet, you can cope. You have found people that have tried one thing too many, so many times, Abraham Lincoln, and eventually he could became a president. You can cope. There may be a peculiar predicament that you have. It is like, you know, when I read, I don't understand. That's my peculiarity. It is like, I'm always tired. I'm always fed up. I want to do this. I start with a great zeal, a great zeal, and great fortitude. And then the moment I start, I just lose interest. And therefore, that's your peculiarity. In the peculiar predicament, thank God, with courage that the Lord will give you, you will call. I will call. Number two, we cope under peer pressure. Peer pressure. That's something you know, for everyone. It's not just for you know teenagers and for young adults. It's for everyone. Your peers, your classmates. And the people like you, and the people who are not thinking of their lives, they're thinking of your own life. And they think that even though they can't control their own lives, they will control your life. Pressure, pressure, pressure is the pressure to fit in. Is the pressure not to climb up. Is the pressure not to be different. You're going fast, too fast. And you're doing something you know, that others have not done. And then the people that are near, and they have never attempted that, and they put peer pressure on you. The people that were, are able to swim against the tide with courage, knowing when we get up there, the Lord will not say, I understand. It's your people, the peers that have hindered you from achieving what I called you to achieve. So I excuse you. No, he'll not excuse us. He would say, I told you to be strong and to be very courageous and look at the path I have before you. By the grace of God, we have all had peer pressures. I had peer pressures as I was growing up. But then uh, I went through and I pierced through that kind of peer pressure. And I'm where I am today. That same courage the Lord will give you. Yeah. Number one, peculiar peculiarities and predicament. Number two, peer pressure. Number three, personal perception personal perception you know we go through lives uh, with perceptions those people they perceive that those canaanites were like giants that's their personal perception they perceive they were grasshoppers that's their personal perception they are great i am small that's your personal perception. They are rich. I don't have anything. You know? That's your personal perception. They are lucky. I am not unlucky. I am not lucky. That is your personal perception. And that is the time you need to cope. That in spite of that, even though that is there, even though that's the way I feel, even though I feel this is what I perceive, yet I can cope. Number four, powerful personalities. There are bullies in life. We don't only have bullies in the school, bullies in college, and bullies, uh, you know, around us. In the street, we have bullies. The people who are very difficult, powerful personalities. And they march through the city and through the town. Anyone they find trying to climb up, they'll bring him down. And you say, how can I go? Courage, courage. 
when Joshua got to the land, those people at Jericho, they formed the gates, they closed all their doors, and they said they will not come in there. And Joshua went back to God. He said, I've sent you there. All the walls will come down. All the walls that buy you and debar you and stop you from getting in into that place of your inheritance and possession, you will enter. I will enter. And so those powerful personalities, and Joshua said, what will I do? He said, tell the children of Israel, everybody can do what I tell them to do. He didn't tell them to acquire ammunition, to learn how to shoot. He didn't tell them to learn how to do this and do that. What are we going to do? Walk around your Jericho walls once a day. Everybody can do that. Second day, walk around again. And with the understanding, I can go. On the seventh day, walk around seven times and just shout. The walls are still up. Shout. The walls are still standing. Shout. And they did, and the Jericho walls came down flat. I see that all the Jericho walls before you will fall down flat. The things you are thinking, that's impossible. I cannot jump over that. I cannot penetrate that. Just happily, joyfully, triumphantly walk through and walk around and say, Lord, I thank you it is done. Your Jericho walls are down. And then number five is pervasive pollution. Pollution everywhere. Corruption everywhere. In this atmosphere, who can cope? Who can cope with this situation? And then somebody telling himself, it's only when I travel out, when I go to another place where there'll be no pressure, where there'll be no uh, predicament, where there'll be no bullies, where there'll be no personal, uh, powerful personalities, where there'll be no pollution, no corruption, then I will thrive. Here where you are, anywhere the Lord has ordained that you will be, you will thrive in Jesus' name. And then, uh, number six, in the present pandemics. In the present pandemics, and somebody says, systems are not even working. And we're not even allowed to gather together and have this or that. And if there is no way I can walk on my vision, how will that be? The God of heaven, even this during, uh, during this uh, present pandemics, the Lord will make you shine. Yeah. And the Lord will make you overcome. Yeah. And then uh, prophetic performance prophetic performance in the midst of prophecies going up and going down you know at the end of the year this prophet will say this new year is going to be darkness everywhere another person will say we have not seen anything yet that this new year this will happen this will happen and this will happen in this new year if you think that you know you are going to make progress those uh, prophets they say i will don't want to deceive anybody the lord has shown them it's going to be a difficult time and then i remember by Elijah, there was famine in the whole nation. And in that famine, God said, Elijah, he said, here am I, Lord, come. And then he put him at the brook and he drank water out of it and God sent him uh, food from nowhere through a raven. The Lord will send you help from nowhere. Power from nowhere. Provision from nowhere. Whatever the prophetic utterances are around you. Or maybe somebody wrote to you. He said, well, I hope you believe this. I never say anything except God showed me. And God said, this will happen. That will happen. This will happen. Gather your house together. Because it's going to be terribly tough this year. Hmm. Prophetic performances. How can cope with that? Ezekiah said, I can cope with that. Isaiah came and said, set your house in order because this is Isaiah. I never miss. 
I say a child is going to be born, a son will be given, and it will be so. I said, a virgin shall conceive, it shall be so. I, that same prophet, I come to you, and I say, you will die. What do you do with that? To cope, you have to have the courage of alone going to God. And Ezekiah said, God, what am I hearing? I'm not ready to die yet. Are you ready to die? Yeah. Hey, why don't you tell God I'm not ready to die yet? They prophesy. Why don't you go back to God? I'm not ready for that. You have a dream. Why don't you go back to God? I'm not ready for that yet. He says, God, I don't accept that. He said, you sent him. But I'm not going to die. I'm going to live. I'm going to live. I am going to live. Everything the Lord has ordained that I will do, I will do before I go. I like the amen, but you know, that's for me. Everything the Lord has ordained that you will be, that you will do, that you will achieve, you do, you'll achieve before you go. The prophetic performance. Those are the people that face life. They don't see darkness. They don't see negativity. They don't see impossibility. All they see is the God in heaven who has called them that they will achieve. And they will achieve. Number one is the courage to cope at crossroads. Point number two. Number two here is the consequence of copping out with cowards. The people that always say, the problem is more than I expected. The challenge is more than I expected. The slope of the hill is so high, that is the height, beyond, above the base, the slope is so high, I don't think I can climb this. And so they check out, they drop out, they cop out. Cowards, cop out. Number one, avoid challenges. Avoid challenges. If there's any challenge in their career, any challenge in their lifestyle, any challenge in their home, any challenge in wherever the Lord has called them, the first thing they, they think about, they cop out, they check out, they drop out, cowards. Number two, they abandon convictions. This was their conviction, and before they get on the field, they said, I can I will, I must, and now they get to the field, and the moment they get there, there are, there are things that challenge their convictions. As if you cannot. Where were you born? In a village? Where did you grow up? In a community that is, you know, moderate. And then we didn't have this, we didn't have that, we didn't have that. And so they abandon their convictions. This week of impact, the Lord has planted conviction in your heart. And with courage, you'll pursue that conviction. If you find yourself abandoning your convictions, your spiritual conviction, your Christian conviction, your professional conviction, your personal inmate conviction, if you find yourself abandoning that, you're a coward, a cop out. Then number three, they abase their conscience. They tell them, in this place of work, you know what? We understand. Honesty, we leave honesty in the dictionary. Because that's the place it belongs. Over here, if you're going to make it, honesty, forget about that. Other people, they forget integrity. They throw off. They throw out, they throw away their integrity because they tell them over here integrity does not work. And so they destroy their conscience, they sear their conscience, 
and they are based their conscience. Number four, they accept corruption. Everybody, whenever we come out, we say, God, clear corruption away. Clear corruption away. In church, we all rise up and we pray, we shout, take corruption away from our country. And then these same people that pray, they are cowards. They cannot be the front runner and the forerunner in canceling corruption. And they go to their offices and they go to their communities. They're looking for something. You know, and the people tell them, nothing goes for nothing. If you want that, bring this. They don't call it little bribe. They say pour water so that you can walk on wet ground. And then they compromise. They accept corruption. I will not accept corruption. I will not approve of corruption. Say it very well. I will not affirm corruption. These are courageous people. The cowards accept corruption and the cowards acquire more cowardice. They were cowards before they got to that place. Now the challenges and the pressure and what the people are saying, they acquire more cowardice. Number six, they abide in crooked character. They are characters that the Lord wants to build up, clean up, clear up, and make them real examples and shiny stars anywhere he has put them because of cowardice and because of the tendency and the habit of copying out they abide in crooked character and such lives number seven they attract condemnation from the creator they attract condemnation from the creator they are the people that never make it i will not be in their company i said i, I will not be, be in their company yeah. hey, look at some like that psalm 78 and i'm reading from verse 9 psalm 78 we're reading from verse 9. Look at this. The children of Ephraim being armed, carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. They were equipped. They were engaged. They were enlisted. They were fortified. They were prepared. They were trained. But all that, the engagement, the enlistment, the involvement, the skill, the training, the ability, the power will amount to nothing if you're a cop out. Will amount to nothing if you're a coward. The children of Ephraim being armed, carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. Look at verse 10. It says in verse 10, they kept not the covenant of God, they refused to walk in his law and then in verse 11 it says they forgot his works they forgot his wonders that he showed them look at verse 41 here is where cowards are knocked down this is why cowards never make it yea they turned back and tempted God look at this and limited the Holy One of Israel. They brought God to their level. What I cannot do, God cannot do. What I cannot face, God cannot face. And what I cannot challenge, God cannot challenge. What I cannot overcome by myself, God cannot overcome. They limited the Holy One of Israel. But now, as we come, so the New Testament, we are walking by faith. 
And if you can only believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Any believer in the house tonight? I said any believer there? Raise up the hand that, you know, even the people who thought you'll not make it, they'll see your hand, they'll say you have come out of that unbelief. You will overcome in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 38. Hebrews chapter 10, reading from verse 38, it says now, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back out of cowardice, out of copping out, out of dropping out, if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Verse 39, he said, but we are not of them that draw back. I am not of them. I am not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Believe to the saving of the soul. There's initial salvation. There is ongoing salvation. There is the final salvation, and as you keep on believing, the Lord will give you salvation in all ramifications in Jesus' name. Amen. Point number three now is our connection with the conqueror for new creation. Our connection, you know, what you need to do is to get connected with power. Heavenly power, unlimited power, unfailing power, is to get connected with power. The power that comes in your life and makes you a conqueror, and turns you a conqueror. It will be so in Jesus' name. In Matthew chapter 4 verse 19, and he says unto them, follow me and I will make you. Follow me, I will make you. The Lord wanted to make Peter a fish of men. Follow me. He wants to make you whatever the calling, whatever calling he has given you. All you need to do is connect. Follow me, you follow the Lord. You will not be a failure. You will not be a dropout. You follow the Lord, enemies will not trample you on their feet. He will make you what you ought to be in Jesus' name. Look at Romans chapter 6, reading from verse 18. Being then made free, he will make you free. Free to walk, free to move, free to go, free to succeed, and free to run the race he has brought before you in Jesus' name. Being made free from sin. Look at that. That's what destroyed the prospects of Adam and Eve. But now, Christ comes and he said, everything that happened negatively to Adam and Eve, it will reverse in your life. It will reverse in my life. It will reverse in my life. And it makes you free. Look up. It says it makes you free. We didn't ask him to do that. He volunteered to do that. He took the initiative. Well, we didn't even know there's a possibility of freedom. We didn't know there's any possibility of redemption. He said, there's something they call redemption. Is that so? There's something they call freedom. Is that so? There's something they call salvation. Is that so? There's something they call eternal life. Is that so? And I will give it to you. He was the one that took the initiative and he said, this is what I will do for you. He will do it for you. Being made free from sin, he became the servants of righteousness. Look at verse 22 there. In verse 22 it says, And but now 
but now forget yesterday but now forget last week but now forget last year but now forget the years of failure and the years of defeat but now forget the years of up and down falling and rising but now be made free from sin and become the servants to god ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life let's come to revelation chapter 21 revelation chapter 21 verse 7 in revelation chapter 21 verse 7 it says he that overcometh shall inherit how many things all things and i will be his god and he shall be my son the lord will be your god christ will be your savior It'll transform your life. It'll change everything that needs to be changed in your life. What happens after that? Come back to verse 5. In verse 5, it tells us, And he that sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new in your life. Behold, I make all things new this new year. Behold, I make all all things new in the path that is uh, before you in the race you are going to run behold i make all things tell me somebody new. all things new number one you'll have this year a new confession Amen. a new confession if you will confess with your mouth the lordship of jesus and believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead, you will be saved. Number two, a new conversion. A new conversion. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. There will be a new conversion. Maybe you said, I was converted before, I hear, but did anything change? Your mindset, did that change? Your plan, did that change? Your language, did that change? Your cowardice, did that change? Your character, did that change? There's a new conversion coming to you today. I said there's a new conversion coming to you today. Number three, a new creation a new creation if any man if any woman if any boy any girl be in christ it's a new creation old things are passed away and behold tell me tell me tell me i told you to tell me so that you can find out in your own life as all things have all things passed away and all things become new in my life, my thoughts, my plans, my disposition, my attitude, my inner conviction, as the old passed away, my relationships and my emotion. Am I always getting angry, angry, angry any, any day, every day at little things, at big things? Am I crushed? Am I conquered? If any man be in Christ, it's a new creation, old, new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, tell me, all things have become new. Number four, a new companionship. A new companionship. You know, in the past... Your companion was on the negative side. I will do this. And that voice will say, no, don't. You cannot. I'm going to the right. And that companion will say inside you, go to the left. I'm going to read. That one will say, no, go and play. But now you have a new companion. And Jesus is that new companion. is the one that will pave the way before you and say, let's go and succeed together. Because I overcame, you will overcome. Because I conquered, you will conquer. Because I'm for the top and for the highest, you'll be for the top, for the highest in Jesus' name. 
he never discourages anything good. He comes to your life and he makes you do what you are created for a new companionship and then a new consecration. A new consecration. Now, everybody seems to have consecration. The man of the world consecrates his energy, his brain, his thoughts, his mind to destructive things. And the one being controlled by Satan, he consecrates energy and everything to what Satan is dictating to him. But now the one who has left sin, has left Satan, has left evil, has left a bad society. The same consecration, he brings everything now to the altar of the Lord and he consecrates to the Lord he sows the good seed everywhere and the good seed you sow will come up with a lot of good harvest in your life in Jesus name a new consecration number six a new courage you know before you came to Christ before you made that connection with the Lord you, 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 you know always get fed up always get tired always get you know when the exam is coming I think of the exam I get sick and when a new a new opportunity comes I need to do that I think of that I get sick when it comes to face a crowd or to face your class you just pass out because there was no courage and the cowardice followed you everywhere but now a challenge has come i'm excited about that challenge a new courage comes into your life in jesus name and now you become now you become now you become a new conqueror a new conqueror a new conqueror you know I know some people, before they come to this level, the only thing they conquered, they conquered mosquitoes. If they're reading and then a mosquito flies by, they throw the book away and they're searching, where is the mosquito? Where is the mosquito? The only thing they covered in it, they conquered in their lives, they conquered mosquitoes. And the things they try to cover, they are as small, as negligible, as insignificant, as almost invisible as mosquitoes. And then later, they conquer flies and they conquer cockroach. They say, trust me, trust me, anywhere I see cockroach, I conquer. That's all you conquer, but now a new conqueror. I said a new conqueror. Yeah. Instead of conquering mosquitoes, I conquer mountains. Yeah. I said I conquer mountains. Yeah. Any force, instead of conquering flies, I conquer force, formidable forces that stand before me. I keep on walking. I keep on walking. I keep on walking. Let me explain to you what I mean by that. Jesus went to pray. And his disciples were on the sea. And he was walking on the land. And he saw the disciples on the sea. What did he do? Did he stand at the shore there crying? The boat is gone. The sheep is gone. No. He was walking on land. And then he kept on walking. He saw the sea in front of him. He kept on walking. And he saw that he was going into the river. He kept on walking. He kept on walking. He had the courage is passing on to us with your heart. That when you are walking and it is solid ground now, but then you come to a place that will sink you into oblivion, then you keep on walking. That's courage. Keep on walking. I said, keep on walking. Yeah. That's what unstoppable people do. They keep on walking. 
They see difficulty, they keep on walking. They see challenges, they keep on walking. They hear criticism and they keep on walking. They hear people that belittle them and they keep on walking. They see the impossibility of a river before them. They keep on walking. And they see the people that said, you will never cross this shore. You will never cross this line. And they keep on walking. I want to announce to you today that I have thousands, hundreds of thousands of people here outside everywhere that take everything we're spoken tonight and then in their lives they keep on walking in your life you keep on walking whatever they say you keep on walking whatever noise is coming from there you keep on walking you walk to the place of destiny i will walk Unto the, unto the place of destiny. of destiny connection with the lord heads bowed and eyes closed heads bowed and eyes closed the lord wants to take you from the place of failure and to the place of success from the place of a downtrodden coward to a person who is lifted up by divine connection with the Lord. And he says, I make all things new in your life. Let's bow and eyes closed. I don't want to leave anybody behind who are going on a great journey, a journey of accomplishment, a journey of achievement, a journey of a person, of a place that will never be driven back. It's about an eyes closed, and you want to connect with this great companion Christ that will make you a new creation. And everything before you will become new. Wherever you are, raise up your hand over there. Over here in the Alpha location. Over there anywhere. A new life is set before you. A new way is set before you. A new path is set before you. And that habit of copying out. That habit of dropping out. That habit of being always tired to move on. The Lord wants to cancel it now. And you're giving yourself fully, surrendering yourself fully, wholeheartedly unto the Lord. Wherever you are, raise up your hand. God bless you there. As you're raising up your hand, please stand up. Please stand up. Make a date with the Lord. Make this a momentous time with the Lord. That the Lord will see that you're making that connection now with a great conqueror that never lost any battle. Stand up so I can pray with you. Stand up so I can connect you. You can get connected with Christ as Savior, Christ the giver of eternal life, and Christ that sets us free from our past and brings us into this new life. God bless you there. God bless you there. God bless you there. Make this the day, the time. You give yourself unreservedly unto the Lord. Tell him to forgive your past. Tell him you turn away from the past. And you turn to him now with all your heart. He has accepted you. He said, whosoever comes to me, I will for no reason cast out. He cannot cast you away. I want eternal life, and that's what he gives to you now. I'm praying, I'm praying with you now, Father, in the name of Jesus. You have said, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And all these who have raised up their hands here, there, on the social media, in the privacy of their homes, anywhere they are now, they've given themselves unto you. Receive, accept them in Jesus' name. Forgive all their sins in Jesus' name. Make new creatures out of everyone now in Jesus' name. As they confess with their mouth 
that Christ Jesus is their Lord and that was raised up to set them free, to grant them eternal life and salvation, and they confess that, make it a reality in their lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We know it is done. In Jesus' name, we pray. The Lord has done it. I said the Lord has done it. Our counselors are there. They'll quickly take all the information they require. And then after that, I'll come to pray for everyone. New creatures today, everyone in Jesus' name. We'll call on our minister tonight to please help us during this counseling time. This is a moment of connection. This is a moment of connection. If you have given your life to Christ this evening, whether you are hearing us on social media, on TV, or on radio, you can connect with Christ right now using www.dclm.org forward slash connect with Christ. If you are joining us on TV, on radio, you can send a text to plus 234-915-444-9263. If you are joining us on radio and on TV, you can connect with us, send a text if you've given your life to Christ through this phone, phone number, plus 234-915-444-9263. If you are here seated, you want to connect with Christ right now, as the final prayer will come up, you want to start praying for connection. Christ wants to connect you. This is the night you have been waiting for. Counselors, let's check up on those who are standing. Don't live here the same way tonight. Don't live here as someone who only conquers mosquitoes. Live here as somebody who can conquer your mountains. You can get connection through the altar of Christ. This is Mount Zion. This is your night of connection. This is your night of a new confession. This is your night of a new conversion. This is your night to become a new creator. This is your night to get a new companionship with God. This is your night to get a new courage. This is your night to be a conqueror. Connect with Christ this evening. Connect with Christ this evening. Don't go home the same way. Please, our counselors, notify us when we are done. If you are sitting, this is the night of your connection. And for those of us who have given our lives to Christ, we have dinner with Jesus at the back of the hall. You can join us there as we have a quality time with you. The man of God will be coming soon. The man of God will be coming soon. Would you go home the same way? Amen. Amen. I stand to be a conqueror. I stand to be an overcomer. I stand to be a mountain mover. Every mountain in your life will move in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Look at that mountain. Look at that sickness. Look at that infirmity. Look at that disease. Whatever the name. Look at that. Those diseases, sicknesses, you see now, you see them no more in Jesus' name. Kill has come. Healing has come. Deliverance has come. I will give testimony. I will have a testimony. That problem will stop right now. Are you ready? Raise up the hand and lay the hand where you have the problem. At the final, amen, everything will vanish away. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. You have said you will not fail us. You have said you will not forsake us. You have said every word that comes out of you will do its work, will not come back to you void. And Lord, I come with that confidence, trust, and faith. That everyone tonight, here, there, YouTube, Facebook, all the handles, over the social media, online, Lord, power goes forth to them now in Jesus' name. Mountain of sickness, of infirmity of incurable disease move out from there Lord set every captive free Lord Jesus has went about doing good healing delivering all that were oppressed of the devil I pray now you go about everywhere touch every life heal the sick deliver the oppressed that demonic thing that troubles, harasses that life, I command you, demon, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, now healing everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Deliverance everywhere. Testimony in every mouth. Manifestation of your power performance of your promise demonstration of who you are the healer the deliverer be done right now in jesus name thank you lord thank you lord it is done in jesus name i pray I receive. I receive. I receive. Check up. The miracle is there. Check up, check up, check up. You are now a conqueror. Keep clapping if you know you are a conqueror. Keep clapping if you know you have a new confession. Keep clapping if you know you have a new conversion. Keep clapping if you know you are a new creator. Keep clapping if you know you have found a new companion in him. Keep clapping if you know you have gotten a new courage. Keep clapping if you know you are a conqueror. Check up, in, check up, check up, check up on your body. Check up everywhere. If you have any infirmity, this is the time of your victory. You are a conqueror. Check up, check up, check up, check up. Check your body. The problems have gone. Your sickness have gone. You have a new beginning. You are a new creature. It is in you. Those wrong imaginations have gone. Those wrong visions have gone. A new language you have right now. A new tongue you have right now. A new power you have right now. A new vision you have right now. A new strength you have right now. A new glory you have right now. Somebody shout hallelujah. Check up on yourself right now. 
check up on yourself. The man of God has spoken and power has gone forth. Check up yourself. Check up your body. If you have testimonies, you can go to the left hand side of the podium. I know somebody somewhere has gotten it. If you have gotten it, don't be shy. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. We want you to come out and share your testimonies. Go to the left hand side of the podium and share your testimonies. If you are online and we and or any of our virtual locations, go to dclm.org forward slash testimonies. If you are here and you are online or online, you want to send in your testimonies, go to dclm.org forward slash testimony. This is the night of impact. I said this is the night of impact. I said this is the night of impact. Check yourself. Check somebody around you. Tell somebody that I am a new conqueror. Tell your neighbor that I have a new language. I have a new vision. I am a man of impact. I am a woman of impact. I speak a new tongue from tonight. I will leave here a new man. I am full of impact. This is the night of your breakthrough. This is the night of your progress. You don't have the imaginations you have before in Jesus' name. Still check up on yourself. Somebody has something there. If you see that God has blessed you, just shout hallelujah. I want to hear hallelujah if you know God has blessed you. Somebody somewhere, if you know you have been revived, shout a big hallelujah. Check up on yourself. Check up on yourself. I told you when I was introducing him, he's a man that speaks with power. He's a man God has brought for this generation. He's a man that with simple and short prayers, mountain moves. Are you a mountain mover? Are there still mountains remaining in your life? Are there still mountains remaining in your life? Are you a new conqueror? Are you an overcomer? Yes. Do you have a new vision? Yes. Are you ready to be blessed of God? Yes. Check up on yourself. Check up on yourself. Check up on yourself. If you have anywhere that was swollen before, check it up. If you have a place that was paining you before, check it up. If you have a headache before, check it up. If you have something that was aching you before, check it up. If you have anything in you, check it up. This is a time of manifestation. The spirit is moving right now. Don't let him leave you. This is a night of manifestation. Don't just sit down. Rise up. Check up on yourself. Speak the new word. Speak. Confess. Confess miracles to yourself. Confess healings to yourself. Confess healings to yourself. Confess miracles to yourself. This is the night of your breakthrough. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Tarry at this place right now. Tarry at this place right now. If you are online, send in your testimonies. Go to dclm.org forward slash testimonies. If you are online, send in your testimonies. dclm.org forward slash testimonies. We are waiting for you. Tonight is your night. If you are joining us from anywhere in Nigeria or any country in Africa or from the rest of the world, from America, from Russia, from China, if you are online listening to this voice right now, know that this is the hour you have been waiting for. We want to hear your testimony. We want to listen to you. We know that power has gone forth and it does not return void. This evening is your evening of testimony. This evening is your evening of impact. This evening is your evening of breakthrough. If you have testimonies, go to the left hand side of the pulpit. If you have testimonies, go to the left-hand side of the stage. Our counselors are there. They will check you up, and they will confirm your testimonies, and they will send you here. Tonight is the night. Tonight is the night. There was a night Jabez said, no, I want to become a conqueror. This is the night for you. This is the night where the spirit of excellence is here. This is the night where you get the spirit to cope and not to cop out. This is the night where you get the spirit to make a credible contribution in your generation. This night, God wants to surprise you. This night, God wants to surprise you. He has done it already. He has done it already. 
Don't forget, tomorrow is the last day. Are you ready for tomorrow? Are you ready for tomorrow? But before tomorrow, check up on yourself tonight. There is a miracle deposited in you already. 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 Somebody shout a big amen. Somebody shout a big amen. Check up. Don't live here empty handed. Check up yourself. The miracle is there. The power is there. God has deposited something in the crowd this evening. There is a special testimony attached to your name. You cannot live here empty handed. You cannot live here empty handed. This is the night of your breakthrough. It is a moment of connection. It is a moment of conviction. It is the moment of a new creature. It is the moment where he had made all things new for you. We are waiting for the testifiers. God is good and all the time. Let's listen to the first testifier. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Tonight I have with me Tonight I have with me Marvelous Omoshola Agumbiade 
four years ago she was uh, diagnosed of asthma and since then she's been believing the lord for a miracle let's hear her testimony praise the lord praise the living jesus my name is marvelous i'm here to give a testimony to the glory of god and to the shame of the devil four years ago i was diagnosed of asthma uh it all started due to dust everything the weather and the cold coupled together all the deodorants that i've been perceiving they have actually been aggravating and triggering the asthma i came here on thursday evening with a chest pain that will actually lead to the attack so uh, I believed God. That day, I wasn't even in the mood to do anything because I was so weak and everything. But I just prayed a simple prayer that God, the four years that I've been believing on you for, Lord, prove yourself mighty in my life today. And after the prayer of the man of God, yeah, I received my instant miracle. My chest pain disappeared instantly. I went to the hostel to actually like check up on myself because uh, two of my roommates were actually using deodorant that same night. I guess it was... God actually sent them to me to actually like prove that, okay, I'm actually healed. I perceived it and nothing happened. I did not cough. I did not sneeze. Nothing happened. Okay, I came here yesterday to actually testify, but I was told to come over again today so that I can check myself again. I went outside to like take a walk without my nose marks. With the dust and everything, I was inhaling it. And to the glory of God and to the shame of the devil, I did not have any attack during the night. I'm so grateful, God, I think. Praise the Lord. Four years of asthma gone. God is good. And all the time. The next testifier, please. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Tonight I have destiny. Owocho. He wants to testify to the goodness of God, how God saved him and healed him. Let's hear his testimony. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Thank God for the salvation of my soul. So, for what He has done for me, His divine protection, guidance upon my soul. About 2020, I had a sickness, this disease on my primary part, the swelling up. I don't know how I went to chemist, to hospital, but all could not avail. But during the crusade of that, of that in the Lord had at Aquaibon, by the grace of God, I received healing. What the hospital and the emergency that I have been taking cannot do is that he has done and everything gone immediately and I thank God for everything. And last year, December, December 23, I was just sitting and uh, immediately my stomach began to pay me deep down that I cannot eat anything. I continue to bear it like that to this program. Then on the second day, which is M. And I already talked about miracle. And by the grace of God, he is quote from the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 23, that if you can believe in God, all things are possible. Please and by the grace possible. of God, and by the grace of God, when our daddy prayed, I, I, did, I did not receive my healing that time. But when I went to hostel and I sleep in the midnight, I woke up and my stomach was paining me. He decided that I cannot sleep. But by the grace of God, a sleep just came. And I received my healing through revelation. Even the sense that I saw our daddy in the Lord in a dream. And he prayed for me. And I received my healing. And today, I ate two eba. Praise the Lord.
wonders again we begin with some testimonies we'll read from the GS Facebook page and we'll take you through some live testimonies online we'll take this coming all the way from Germany coming on the GS official Facebook page his name is China way to faith he says I took the second vaccine and I was feeling weak I'm sure he's talking about the second vaccine of the COVID-19 and then he says uh, he was feeling feverish, he was feeling headache, feeling pains on his hand after he took the injection. But, to the glory of God, after the prayer of the man of God, according to him, the pain instantly was interrupted. And now, he is completely free. Praise the Lord. We take another live testimony all the way from the United States of America, from Brother Sunday Oitola says... I was sitting like in the audience listening during the youth success camp at DLICC. I was nothing because no one ever thought I would amount to be someone today. Since the youth program and all other programs even impact, I'm the program since the first day not missing any event. Today I am much better and happier and I can feel that God has impacted my life. Praise the Lord. And now we'll take you to Southwest Nigeria, Akure, Southwest Nigeria, Akure Live. thank god for saving my soul um it's all started during the worship session by the guest minister and uh, when it started before i started i asked my sister that why uh why is everybody happy that is here so she was like is the anointing of god and so when it started he was singing the song i did not know the song but i was just following through and then i don't know what happened and suddenly um something came on me I could not hold it. I could not fight back. I just went down to the, to the ground. I just want to thank God for how he saved me. And uh, he has done all things well. Praise the Lord. Also, we have Brother Enoch Agbo, who was delivered from a child pain of many years as well as I divert of seven years. Four on the level, elect elect Federal University of Technology. Now is testimony. Praise the Lord. Um, the second day of the impact program, God did two things in my life. Firstly, before the uh, prayer of the man of God, I was having a sharp pain on my waist. That when I stood up for prayers, I was still feeling the pain. Then I laid my hands on my waist and I prayed. And after the prayer of the man of God, the, the waist pain vanished until now. There's no more pain no more pain anymore. And the second testimony is this. I've been suffering from uh, eye defects 
for about seven years now. Since when I, when I was in secondary school, it was detected. And um, then I've been suffering from it in classes. I, I suffer a lot. Anytime I sit at the back, I'm always worried because I couldn't see far from the back. But then just um, no, on November, during one of the global crusades, I got my healing. God healed me. And then I was still testing it. Okay, so I left it December. And this month, this month, on the second day of this um, impact program, right from where I was sitting and to the projector, I jotted from the beginning of the message to the end of the message without my glasses on. And tonight, you can see me without the glasses on. I can see far more than ever before. Praise the Lord. And now we'll take you to the United States of America, USA Live. Praise God. My name is Zoe Elliott. I reside in Maryland, USA. On Tuesday in the evening, I wasn't feeling well. I had, I had high temperature, sore throat, cold chills. And on Wednesday, I decided to go to the COVID test and it came back positive. I prayed about it. I called some of my leaders. I told them about it and they prayed along. And I also joined the impact program. I've come back today to testify to the glory of God. All the symptoms are gone. Just I've come to say thank you, Lord, for your healing power over my life. Praise God. Impacted, interrupted, and has disappeared. Praise the Lord. Is back to the moderator. And let's testify, please. Praise the Lord. I have here with me Brother Chuku Victor. For some years now, he's been suffering from the medical ward, tagged psychosomatic condition. But through the glory of the Lord, he has a testimony. Let's hear him out. 